Did you know that there's one Photoshop technique that instantly improves the quality of all of your editing and injects every photo with more wow factor than ever before? And the amazing thing is that you can harness its power in just the next 10 minutes, even if you're a Photoshop beginner. So in this video, I'm showing you what this transformational editing technique is, how it will improve every photo you create from now on, and how you can start using it by the end of this video, even if you're a total beginner. And plus, I'm gonna show you how you can take this same technique and use it to blend bracketed exposures to create stunning HDR images in just a few clicks. But first, one of the biggest problems that this technique fixes, and a mistake that I see photographers make all the time with their editing, is using inaccurate adjustments, which leads to sloppy and amateurish results. For example, when Albert Bierstadt was painting his famous Yosemite Valley scene, creating that bright, beautiful light coming in from the distance, he didn't take a massive brush and just cover that entire area with lighter paint in one big brush stroke. He carefully and precisely painted exactly what he wanted to see, exactly where he wanted to see it. Now that sounds ridiculous to say out loud, right? I mean, of course that's how it works. However, making massive sweeping adjustments is how many photographers still edit their photos when adding brightness, contrast, saturation, etc. in Photoshop. But the better approach is to treat our photos like the painters treat their paintings by making small focused adjustments only where those adjustments are really needed. I'm going to share with you a free tool that you can download that makes this as easy as a few clicks of the mouse later in this video. But first it's important to understand these techniques and how they work so that when you come to use them you'll be able to harness their full power and create stunning images. So I'll just show you what it can do first and then you can see just how powerful it is. First on this image we're going to use a curves adjustment layer and then we're going to make it brighten the image by pushing the curve upwards like this. Now, because we've used an adjustment layer, it comes with its own layer mask automatically, and you can use this to show or hide the adjustment in certain areas. And a common way to do this would be to click on the mask, invert it by pressing Command or Control I on the keyboard to hide the adjustment, and then with a white brush on a low opacity, brush into the image to reveal the adjustment in the areas that you're brushing. But the thing is, there's a big problem with doing it this way, and that is that your adjustments can only be as accurate as the size of your brush. So if you want to adjust a tiny little detailed area like this, then you need to use a tiny brush and spend who knows how long getting it perfect. But what I'm about to demonstrate easily eliminates this problem because instead of just trying to brush accurately with a big dumb brush into a delicate and detailed area, loading something called a luminosity selection gives you the equivalent of like a stencil that you can brush through to make sure that the paint only goes where you want it to go. It's called a luminosity selection because it's based on the luminosity or the brightness of the image itself. And that is how you can accurately target specific tonal ranges like shadows, midtones, and highlights with your adjustments. So we'll run through a quick example and then I'll break it down into specific step-by-step -step instructions. So suppose we wanna make three adjustments to this image. One, we wanna lighten the darkest shadows underneath the rocks over here. Two, we want to add some contrast to the midtones in the image, avoiding the brightest highlights and the darkest shadows so that they don't over or underexpose. And three, we want to darken these bright highlights in the sky to recover some detail and color. Now, on the left side of the screen, I'll show you how anyone doing this the manual way would have to do it. And on the right, I'll show you how to do it 10 times faster with my free Photoshop plugin, which you can download via the link in the description and pinned comment. So first adjustment, I'll just press the brighten button on the plugin, invert the layer mask with command or control I, and then I'll press the darkest shadows button on the panel here to load my stencil to brush through. And then I'll brush with a white brush into the area that I wanna paint this effect into. Noticing how even though I'm brushing over the edges into the lighter areas, it's not affecting those areas because of the stencil. All right, second adjustment. This time, I want the adjustment to affect the midtones in the whole image. So what I'm gonna do is click on the midtones button first, and then I'll click the contrast button. And that's it, job done. We've added contrast to the midtones. Right, third adjustment. Let me press the darken button. Invert the layer mask with Command or Control I, and then one of the highlights buttons to load my highlights stencil. And then I'll brush with a white brush into the rough area that I want to darken, knowing that the stencil restricts my brush to only those lightest highlights. While this is all amazing and everything, there's more, because this technique of loading luminosity selections to brush through to make super focused adjustments it not only improves the accuracy and overall quality of your photo editing as you've seen in this video so far, but the same technique is also the best way to blend bracketed exposures in Photoshop to create stunning high dynamic range landscapes. For example, if you have two bracketed exposures each on a separate layer in Photoshop, to blend them together into one, you'll just add a layer mask to the top layer, invert it, Click, in this case, a highlights button on the plugin, and then you'll brush through that selection that the plugin has loaded to reveal the properly exposed sky from this top layer. 
and that's going to blend with the properly exposed foreground on the bottom layer. And if you want to download the free plugin that puts these powerful luminosity masking techniques in your hands with just a few simple clicks, then you can get it now via the link in the description and pinned comment.